Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Mekai Kudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well. A peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. A back again with another one through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You know, we're here to uh, edify the elect out of Ram Ratazai. The so called white man would never change, man. And this lesson is for those of you morons, you idiots out there, you know, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who think that you can change this man. You can't change him. The Bible says that he is accustomed to doing evil. You know what it means to be accustomed to doing evil? All right? It means to be trained. All right? Someone who is an a, a expert... <laughs> You know, in anything. And the so-called white man is an expert. Scripture says that they are estranged from the womb. They go forth from the womb speaking lies. It's in their spirit. It's in their makeup. It's in their genetics. All right, to hate you, to contend with you, to be evil, to corrupt things. And for you to think that you can change that, for you to think that you can alter that. You know, can you alter... A rose from being a rose? You know, can you alter, you know, an apple from being an apple? Can you alter, you know, an orange from being an orange? The so-called white man is the same. You know, he was created to be that. That's the way that Yahweh Shemi Shai created him, to be the wicked, to be the evil. And for those of you who think that you can make him somehow have an epiphany, and to become something that he's not, you can't. And at the end of the day, this man is gonna show you who he truly is by way of bringing evil against you, man. Jeremiah the, the 13th chapter, verse 23 says, can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. You know, so what makes a leopard a leopard? All right, what makes a, a, a Ethiopian a Ethiopian? You know, it's it's of course you know dealing with um, an Ethiopian, you will be whatever your father is. But the word Ethiopian goes into, I believe that's Ayatiap, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Salakia. You know, I don't speak Greek that well. But ayatiyap means to be dark skin, to be burnt face. So the name ayatiyap was given by the Greeks unto the children of Kush for being dark skin. That's what make them who they are. Or that's what, 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 what make them ayatiyap or Ethiopians, the fact that they're dark skin. That as well as going into you are whatever your father is. But what makes a leopard a leopard and what helps you to identify that it is a leopard is, is the fact that it has spots. That helps you to identify that this is a fucking leopard. And the same thing for the so-called white man. Alright? The curse that's put upon them. Alright? The leprosy that was given unto him. As well as the evil nature and the wicked makeup of him. That right there helps you to identify that this is an Edomite by way of his spirit. And it's in his spirit to be evil. It's in his spirit to be wicked. And he will not repent. Although you try to sway him, although you try to inspire them, although you try to convince them, there's no convincing them. And this video is inspired by a video that I watched on YouTube that was posted by an Ak. And it was going into, you know, some Jake's, you know, being outside of a courthouse and the Edomites, you know, is, 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 is um, telling Jake to go back to their church and know that Jake can't pray for him, you know, because he doesn't want a nigga to pray, pray for him and how that he doesn't believe that a nigga's prayer go higher than his head, you know, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And that right there is the same energy that E 
carries unto this day for the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latinos, and the so-called Native Americans. Although they hide it under their tongue, you know, although they speak smooth things, at the end of the day, Esau and Edom would not change. The so-called white man, the self-proclaimed white man, which are the children of Edom, will not change. They're going to always be the same. They're going to always have hatred for you. They're going to always have enmity and animosity against you. So there's nothing that you can do to change that. If you if you could change a dog from being a dog, it won't be a dog anymore. If you can alter a cat from being a cat, it won't be a cat anymore. So there's certain characteristics and there's certain makeups that these particular animals have that helps you to identify that it is what it is. And the same thing with the so-called white man. And one thing and for certain, his is 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 being evil, being cruel, and being wicked. Now, you have certain cases where you have um, so-called white guilt and you have his children seeking to please the poor as it states within the book of Job, the 20th chapter. And I believe that is the 10th verse, Job 20 and 10, which reads, his children shall seek to please the poor and his hand shall restore their goods. And, and you see that in some cases in the regard of so-called Edomite protesters, you know, helping, you know, Jake and going out and protesting with them. But at the end of the day, that's to fulfill the scriptures. All right. Because it also says that his children shall, shall uh, complain of an ungodly father. All right. Even your children hate you. And that's something. All right. That's a curse that Yahweh Bashim Shai has placed upon you. All right, to bring shame on you. All right, you're being exposed of your shame, your hatred towards the children of Israel, and you are being humiliated. One, your women don't like you. All right, there's another scripture within the book of Job that says that your widows will not mourn for you. This is Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verse 7, coming upon Esau Edom, man. This is Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verse 7, coming upon you, devils. Your women don't love you, and your children hate you, because they are being reproached for the things that you have done, for the hatred that you have held for particular people, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latinos, and the so-called Native Americans, which are the children of Israel. But you have a lot of you Israelites that are stupid. You're dumb. Because no matter how much this devil bites you with his teeth, you still try to find a way to tame this beast. To try to make him into something that he, that he isn't. Job 14 and 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. So this devil is unclean. You know, he's profane. There's nothing that you can do to bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. It's unclean. And it says the same thing within the book of Sirach, the 34th chapter, verse four, of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from the thing which is false, what truth can come? And there's no truth that's gonna come from Esau Edom. Why? Because he was set up to be a deceiver. He was set up to be a liar. He was set up to be the wicked. He was set up to make your life a living hell as a fulfillment of prophecy as a fulfillment of the will of Yahweh until the Most High Heavenly Father decides to move him out of the way and to take him down out of power and to destroy him but for you to put your hope and your trust in something that is a lie all right it won't happen. You can't turn this devil into something that he's not. You can't make him something that he's not. You can't make him to change. You can't cause him to repent. The Bible says within the book of Luke, the book of Luke, the 16th chapter, all right, and going down to the ver verse 29, it says, Abraham said unto, unto, unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. 
Now this is the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus and the rich man being the parable for us and the rich elite banking families. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they persuade, be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So Lazarus asked, I mean, um, the rich man asked that Lazarus will be raised from the dead and sent them to his brothers that he may persuade them to repent. But the rebuttal or the reply from Abraham was that, look, they got the prophets, all right? And if they don't take heed to the prophets, then, no, then they won't repent. There's nothing that you can do to get them to repent and to listen. And that goes hand in hand with that scripture you know, or who will pity a snake charmer that is bitten with the snake, man? Or who, or I'm sorry, and that they would they would not hearken unto the voice of the charmers who charm ever so wisely. So here it is. We are the prophets, and we are here, and we're warning them of the uh, of the judgment that's to come, because the evil and the wickedness that they have been doing throughout the earth, and yet still, this still isn't enough to cause them to repent. All right, this still isn't enough to make them amend their ways, to change, all right, to, to be convinced in the mind to, and persuaded to repent, to feel guilt. Because in that seat, within their gut and within their mind, that causes you to feel pain and to feel bad for the things that you, you, you do, they don't have that. It's not there, it's empty. So therefore, Nothing can make them change. Even when thermonuclear destruction is coming upon them, which was prophesied by the prophets, that still won't be enough to cause them to change. This is the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, in the 11th verse, which reads, well, I start at um, verse 10, which reads, it says, in the fifth angel, poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed Yahweh of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds so even when thermonuclear destruction is coming upon them as judgment they still won't repent so Esau Edom would not change they would not change there's nothing that you can do to get them to change there's nothing that you can say to get them to change. There's nothing that you can do to inspire that within them. Because it's not given unto them to repent. It's given unto them to be the wicked and to be evil and to destroy and to cause a, a living hell within your life. And it's gonna take all the way up until the chariots come all right, and to enter into the house of Esau, Edom, and for thermonuclear destruction to come, come, and for them to be put in the lower state and to have their asses whipped for a thousand years. And then afterwards, for them to be gathered together and to be wholly burnt, to be destroyed, man, in order for us to have peace within this world. Because as long as this man is here, his woman and his children, we will never have peace, man. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. Until the next time, it's Shalom.